All right, this is fifth grade module four, lesson eight, and we're going to start getting into that standard algorithm for multiplying a fraction by a whole number. All right, and we're getting into that standard algorithm today, but we're going to start by thinking about that repeated addition. Remember, when you were learning about your multiplication facts, three times five could be thought of as three, uh, five plus five plus five. Or you could think of it as 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3. And they would both give us the answer of 15. All right. Well, we're going to use this, this idea from all the way back in third grade and apply it to fractions. Uh, so starting off with 2 thirds times 6, and we're going to solve this same problem three different times. So we're going to start with 2 thirds times 6, and, and think of it as addition. So this could mean we're going to add 2 thirds 6 times. 2 thirds plus 2 thirds plus 2 thirds plus 2 thirds plus 2 thirds. And how many times do I have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so I need one more. Uh, plus 2 thirds. All right, now, now we're going to add up the numerators. So 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2. So that's kind of like skip counting. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. So we have 12 thirds, which happens to equal 4, because 12 divided by 3 is 4. So that's one way to think of it. But really, if you look, think about adding all of these 2's, how many 2's did we have here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So a faster way of adding all those 2's is simply to say, take 2, multiply it by 6. And then we're going to have the denominator be a 3. And 12 times 6, I mean 2 times 6 is 12. So you have 12 thirds, which is equal to 4. So teachers, your task is to show students how this, which kind of makes sense, it's repeated addition, we've been doing that since third grade, is related to this, 2 times 6. We don't want it to be magic uh, or something that they just memorize. We really want it to be something that makes sense to your students. Now we have another idea. And we're also going to introduce the concept of basically reducing by a common factor. And what I mean by that is I'm going to begin with this concept of 2 times 6 over 3. But then we can see that 6 and 3 have a common factor. Um, a common factor is they're both divisible by 3. So if we divide them both by 3, so 6 divided by 3 is 2, and 3 divided by 3 is 1, and now we can multiply, and so we have 2 times 2 is 4, and in our denominator we have just a plain old 1, and 4 over 1 is equal to 4. So we have three different ways to think of this multiplication problem. One is repeated addition, which we're just using as a launching pad. That's not going to be our goal. Our goal is these two other methods down here. This method, we just multiply. 2 times 6, get 12, and then we reduce. Over here, I reduced first. I, I'm using the word reduce because that's old school language, but we divided uh, two numbers by a common factor, and that gave us 2 times 2, which is 4, and our denominator became a 1. Let's put this into practice. So they want us to solve this problem twice, and we're going to solve it um, using the, the multiplication ways. We're not going to use repeated addition. So 3 fourths times 16 is 3 times 16 over 4. And 3 times 16, I'm going to go down here on scratch paper, 16 times 3 gives us 48. So our numerator is 48, and our denominator is 4. Now, 48 over 4, right here, 48 fourths, can be simplified by dividing. 
48 divided by 4, and I, I'm going to do that quickly, and that gives us 12. All right, so now we know our answer is 12. And now let's try it using the other way, which is we're going to, what I call it, reduce first, then multiply. All right, so 3 fourths times 16 is 3 times 16 over 4. Now I can see that 16 and 4 have a common factor. They can both be divided by 4. So I'm going to cross them both off, and I'm going to divide each one of them by 4. So 4 divided by 4 is 1, and 16 divided by 4 is 4. And now we end up with their numerator is 3 times 4, so our numerator is 12, and our denominator is just a 1. And that's 12. So the idea, teachers, is to show students both ways because sometimes one way is easier than the other. And so we want our students to have um, in their toolkit both methods. The other thing you might want to think about is over here, I saw that 16 and 4 are both divisible by 4. They have a common factor of 4. Now your students might say, well, they also have a common factor of 2. Well, go ahead and walk through this problem and dividing both of them by a common factor of 2. And you'll still end up with the answer of 12. You just might have to do a little bit of extra reducing. And go ahead and show your, your students that. We're going to put this into more practice here. So 10 ninths times 21. Now the first thing I want you to point out to your students is 10 ninths is bigger than one whole. Which means our answer needs to get bigger than 21 not smaller than 21. So we're going to multiply 10 times 21 over 9. And 10 times 21 is easy. We just stick on a 0. And we have 20, 210 over 9. 210 ninths. And to simplify that, we're going to use division. And we're going to divide longhand. 210 divided by 9. 9 goes into 21 two times, so that's 18 with 3 left over. Drop the 0. 9 goes into 30 uh, three times, so that's 27 with 3 left over. So that's 23 and 3 ninths is our answer. And at this point, 23 and 3 ninths, we can leave it as 23 and 3 ninths. Or we can change it to 23 and one-third. It's up to you. Um, now, the other way is we're going to multiply um, after we reduce. So first we're going to take that 10 ninths times 21, and that's the same thing as 10 times 21 over 9. And then we can see that 21 and 9 have a common factor. Their common factor is 3. So they can both be divided by 3. So 21 divided by 3 is 7. And 9 divided by 3 is 3. And so now we can multiply. In our numerator, we have 10 times 7, which is 70. And our denominator is just a plain old 3. So now we have 70 thirds, and we have to use longhand division to simplify that. So 3 goes into 7 two times with 1 left over, and now we have 3 goes into 10 three times. That's 9 with 1 left over. So our answer is 23 and a third. And that's exactly what we knew all along in the previous time that we solved it over here. 23 and a third, 23 and a third. So recapping, I call this method multiply first, then reduce. I call this method reduce first, then multiply. 
So in this problem, they said, hey, solve it any way you want. So we're going to do that. We're going to do 4 fifths times 60, and that's equal to 4 times 60 over 5. And I can see that 60 and 5 have a common factor of 5. So I'm going to cross them both off and divide them each by 5. So 5 divided by 5 is 1. 60 divided by 5 is 12, because like a clock, there's 60 minutes in an hour, and it's 12. You know, every number counts as 5 minutes. And so we now have, in our numerator, 4 times 12. And 4 times 12 is 48. And our denominator is 1, so 48 over 1 is just 48. So it's 48 minutes. So 4 fifths times 60 is 48, which means 4 fifths of an hour is 48 minutes. And that wraps up Grade 5, Module 4, Lesson 8, where we are really getting into that standard algorithm for multiplying a fraction by a whole number.